And so that's where I think it's happening in some of these people that adopt essentially zero carb diets. It's just that all that protein, which I think is a good thing, is stimulating glucagon to a higher amount than average, and thus they're seeing a higher glucose level in the blood. But again, though, I don't think that's a problem. Your comment about the hemoglobin A1C, how people will see that it's going up, that can be a result of two things. And I think it's the second I'll mention that too many people overlook, including in clinical practice. Yes, hemoglobin A1C can be a reflection of an elevated glucose. Yes, that's true. But there's another part of that formula or another variable that's going into this formula. Hemoglobin A1C is glucose and hemoglobin mm. or the red blood cell itself. And too many people only look at the, hemo the glucose part and totally ignore the hemoglobin or red blood cell part of it. Hemoglobin is just a part of red blood cells. Um, so what I think can also be happening in this case, and there's some limited case reports in the published literature to confirm this, which is why I'm mentioning it at all. So it's partly a theory of mine and, and partly backed up by data. Um, the more nourished a person is, especially with red, red meat and beef, I believe the longer the red blood cells live, that essentially the red blood cells are healthier and they last a lot longer. They can last up to you know, maybe 50% longer than someone who's, say, a vegan and who's eating very, very um, uh, you know, nutrient deficient diets for the most part. And it, uh, the longer a red blood cell is alive, just the more likely it is to get glycosylated or to have a glucose bind to it. And so what I think may be happening in these people with long lived red blood cells is that they're kind of getting a false positive with their hemoglobin A1C test. So they get a hemoglobin A1C and it's in the mid fives and the clinician will say, oh, wow, you're, it looks like you're kind of getting pre-diabetic. When in reality, their glucose levels are in the 80s or maybe low 90s. Those are very, very good levels. Even I would say around 100. Um, those are fine glucose levels. It's just that they have really long lived red blood cells. In contrast, you could have someone with elevated glucose levels and a normal hemoglobin A1C, and they would get a pat on the back. And that's just because they actually have really short-lived red blood cells. The red blood cells die so quickly that they never have time to get glycosylated. And thus they end up having a false negative. You think, you know, you have this false sense of security that their glucose levels are actually okay, when in reality, they're not great and they are trending in a wrong direction. It's just the HbA1c doesn't detect it again because it's a problem of the red blood cells in this case. 